Hello again YouTube. Alright guys, this is the second part of the file binder tutorial that I made. Okay, so in this part I'm going to show you how to make a stub, which is actually a piece of code in computer programming language that stand in for some other programming functionality. Okay, so it's not useful itself, so I'll go and create a new project. I'll call this stub and in the blank form, we don't have to actually worry about the form itself because it's not going to be visible to the user. Okay, so what you're going to do, double click on it and go to form load event. Okay, so on the top over here, um, remember the two functions that we made in our file binder, function secure and the function unsecure, which were used for encrypting and decrypting the bytes of two files. Okay, so in this one, we will just need the unsecure function, which will be decryptor because we're not going to be encrypting in this stub. So to declare the unsecure function, once again, we go function unsecure in the brackets by well data as byte as byte. Okay, using SA as new system dot security dot cryptography dot IJ and they'll managed SA dot IV new byte one two three four five six seven eight and nine once again one two three four five six seven so it goes till seven s a dot key equals new byte and then once again in the curly brackets we go opposite of the initialization vector so starting from seven Six five four three two one comma nine eight seven six five four three two one and then return SA dot create decryptor dot transform final block data comma zero comma data dot length and that's it we got our decryptor over here so in the form load event, we need to first of all create a reference to the temp directory, which is dim temp as string. So we create a reference to the temp directory. We go my dot computer dot file system dot special directory so temp. So this is a temporary directory of our system. Okay, so once you have created the reference to your temp directory, what we're gonna do is we're gonna declare an array that will hold all the separated elements of the f two files. Remember how we created one split string that separated all the elements in the two files? And now we're gonna store them into an array. So this is how we do a dim drop as string and then split brackets system dot io dot file dot read all text and then in the brackets we just type in application dot executable part comma and then the name of the file splitter okay you need to make sure that you exactly type in the split string that we created in file binder otherwise it will not work okay and then we close the bracket and now we have the reference to temp directory and we also have everything stored in an array then all we need to do is um, convert the two files back from base64 string to bytes and this is how we do it then file one as byte equals unsecure in the brackets convert or from base64 string drop one which is the actual file bytes of the first file we can do the same thing for the second file unsecure convert dot from basics for string and this time we type in drop three and now once we have the two the file bytes of the two files what we can do is we can write everything into one file and store them into a temp directory so we can do this by my dot computer dot file system dot write all bytes and then in the brackets we just type in the reference to a temp directory which was temp dir and forward slash 
and drop two, which is the save file name of our first file. Comma file one, comma false. And we can just copy and paste this for our second file. Change the two to four and file one to file two. And now this is the final part where you can choose which file you want to start first. So we go process dot start in the brackets we just type in temp directory and forward slash and drop two and I'm gonna start the second one in the same line once again temp directory and forward slash and drop four and this will start the first file first and the second file after that and you can have more than two files if you want to and you can let the user choose which file they want to start first by placing checkbox and other stuff so all you have to do is move around this to first and then move this to second and that will work okay guys um yeah so i'm going to quickly include this stub to our file binder by going build stub one because i already had stub already created a f project stub before so this one is automatically renamed to stub one okay but your one should st say it's stub okay now we just close this program or we can just go to file and open our file binder from here file binder tutorial and then just click on the sln file okay so once we are back into our file binder project that we made before you want to go to solution and go to my project you want to go to solution explorer and my project and then go down to resources add resource click on the side thing and then go existing file and this will let you choose the stub go project go stub one for me go stub one bin debug go to stub1.exe and now you have your stub included in your resources folder okay we might want to change that the other thing to stub1 as well you just change this to stub1 that should work okay we're gonna save this we're gonna build the application and I'm gonna give you an example of one so open up your projects window and go to file binder tutorial go to bin go to debug and then start the exe file go to file one and just choose anything you want I'm gonna choose this picture over here in the file two notice how it opens in desktop because we choose that as initial directory go to pictures go to second picture over here and now once you click on bind it should ask give us all files and the file name is we can choose it say so it's choose an output folder so in the file name I'm just gonna call this test dot exe and remember it should always be exe format you can't have jpg format in it so as you click on save it gives the message box saying successfully binded now we go to our desktop that's where it saved everything so we go to our desktop and here we have our test file so once we run it this one is first cricket and then we have the other one at the back so as you can see it works fine but the only problem is that the stub.exe file also showed the form we can easily fix that by going back to our stub project okay so let's go back to our stub project recent files that's stub one okay I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff okay so we need to put try and catch over here that will prevent our stuff from running and in the catch we can just type in process dot get current processes dot kill you know if any error occurs to just kill itself 
and that should fix the problem of the form running as well. Let's try that again. Build stub. Let's go back to our file binder. And let's just go back to our resources folder and we want to include the new stub that we build it. Go to projects, stub one, bin, debug, all files. Yes. And that should work. Okay, let's try that. Okay, we're gonna try a different image this time. Go bind. Let's give it test one. Dot exe. Save. Let's go back here. Let's start that. And. That's the first file and that's the second file at the back and there is no stop running this time. So thanks guys for watching this video. Please rate, comment and subscribe. If you have any questions just let me know by comment or sending me a private message and I shall reply to it ASAP. Thank you. Bye bye.